So, day two, week 13, the penultimate day of the season is upon us, and we are in Australia, Japan, and England today for some action packed racing. We'll be at Mooney Valley and then later on at Flemington for the Melbourne Cup in Australia, and sandwiched in between them, one race at Nakayama and five at Pontefract in Yorkshire in England. So let's take a look then at what we've got on offer. The first race is at Mooney Valley and it's the Manicato Stakes. It's a six foot on Group 1. And awesome music for John Morgan will be the red hot favourite in this one, rated superior to all the others in the field. But two steps for Steve Rand and new tricks for Django will be hoping to lower that one's colours. And also Kinky Boots and Black Dead Redemption for Darren Thompson and Joshua Sutherland are no back numbers either. So that should be an interesting start to the day. The second race at Mooney Valley is the Cox Plate. That is a very famous old race, of course. We've got a very small field for that. There's only about eight or nine of them in it. It's a ten furlong group one and favourite son for Django. Looks head and shoulders above all the others, to be honest. But Lady Jane Felsham for Paul Road has been a little bit in and out this season. Won a couple of Group Ones though, and could easily take this. Made to be broken for Joshua Sutherland. He's also not one to be taken lightly. And John Morgan Zartax doesn't have John Morgan looking form, but you can never rule him out of these big races. Who's that whiz kid for? Hans Jones could spring a little bit of a surprise. And Velez Bay Court for Darren Thompson is never too far away either. So that should be a cracking race as well. So that's your two at Mooney Valley then. Then we'll nip over to see a little bit to Japan and Nakayama for the Kesi High Autumn Handicap. It's a 0 to 75 one mile race. And there's a quite a big field for this, so it could be wide open. And the top rated one there, Spanish Steps and Yvonne Elliman are both rated on 72. I don't think Yvonne Elliman's got much chance though because she's a firm ground horse and the going is on the soft side. Born on Venus for Alex Cherry looks like it could give him a big win with two thirds and a win in his last three runs. And there's quite a few in there with chances. It's a wide open race and you could run that race half a dozen times and you'd probably get half a dozen different winners and you wouldn't really rule anything out of a chance of winning that. So just the one race in... Japan then at Nakayama then we're off to Pontefract in Yorkshire where the racing always used to start at 2.45 oh, I've probably told you this story before but it used to be a big coal mine next to the um, next to the race course and the shift used to finish at 2 o'clock so they gave them 45 minutes to get cleaned up get all the coal dust off and get themselves into some decent attire and then they go straight to their races and the first race would always be 2 45. Sadly, that doesn't happen anymore, but it's probably got more to do with coal mines closing down than race planning. Anyway, enough of the party political broadcasting. Let's get on with the races. The first one at Pontefract is the Win Big with the Tote Jackpot Nursery. A 0 to 85 7 furlong race and some really good looking horses in this. You look at the top ones there, the top three are all rated 70, and that's the top weight in this. So it might be a 0 to 85, but 70 is the top rated horse in the race, and three of them have got pretty good form. Zolano fires one twice in its last four races. Misfortune was a winner last time out, and Broken Dream was a winner last time out as well. So Alex Cherry, Hans Jones, and David Robertson will all be hoping for a win there, but there's plenty. Just underneath, who um, have got pretty decent looking forwards. Oh, Little Wing's been going close, and they'll get a decent £3. Blue play for ch Serious Chill will get £4, and you can't rule that one out either. So that looks like it's going to be a really interesting and competitive start to the five races from Pontefract. And the second one is the Mobile Silver Tankard Nursery, again for two yards, of course. This is a 10 furlong event this time, and a slightly bigger field. 0 to 100, and Cheeky Monkey and Treco Bay are both rated 96. Decent looking form, but fiddles for Hans Jones. Looks an interesting one here off 95. Gillen also could go quite well off race. And if only 79 gets a good bit of weight from the principals and has won twice and been second once in three of its last four runs. Dirty Hashtag has also won twice in its last four for Stu Gray. So that one again looks like it's going to be a pretty competitive sort of event. We then move on to the longer distance races, the first one of which is the Pontefract Gold Cup Handicap. Two miles and five furlongs this time, near enough as far as you want to go on the flat and a pretty small field as you'd expect as it's a 0 to 100 and the top one, All or Sandman for Molly at Surfer is rated 112 so I assume that one will be scratched and removed from the race before it starts which will leave Polar Twisted for Derek Hinton. That's the top one with Mr. Ed for Graham Clutterbuck, Warrior 1 for Serious Chill. Also in there with some chances, but Stu Gray's Keys, who comes back year after year and keeps winning these decent races, couldn't be ruled out. And Darren Howes, who's a bit of a king of the stars, has got King's Karyosa, so he wouldn't rule that one out either. But it'll be interesting to see if the stewards notice that all or Sandman shouldn't be in that race, uh, whether it has to get declared void or not. Then we've got the Bluff Cove Handicap, which is a two mile, so a two mile 0 to 85, so a little bit shorter. This time we've got, again, a lot of horses that race against each other week in, week out, and 
I've got some good dual winners as well. The Smoking Man for Graham Constable just about scrapes in on 85, but Constable has won two of its last four for Carl Aragante, and the decent £9 swing should give that one a bit of a chance, although the going might not be in that one's favour. Custom Made for Mayor's Ad Mystery has been third, second and first in its last three runs, and it's been a real good breakthrough season for Mayor's Ad. He's had some good winners, and he'll be hoping to go out with another one there, getting £12 from the top one. Bridesmaid also won twice this season. Last time out was a little disappointing, they only come in ninth, and we'll probably find this one just a little bit too far, probably better at 14 furlongs. That one, Mr. King and really loud for Darren Owls. You can't rule him out of these races, as we've said, and also James Follis with his Harry Bomb. He also will be going close as well, and also in there you've got Geo Storm for Stu Gray and Breakpoint for Graham Christopher, who do particularly well in these races. The Topepool.com handicap is the next race, and that's a one mile five furlongs this time. So we're just dropping down in distance a little bit more again there. This is another 0 to 85, and we've got an 85 rated in it. Indian Chief for Darren Howes, but big shot bang for Hans Jones. Has got some pretty good form. 2 1 3 last time, last three races, and big Jim McLean 3 5 2 1. Talk of the town 6 2 4 1. So there's some pretty good form in there, and you look down towards the middle of the card and Stu Gray's got a bop it that one pops up and wins every now and again as well so he wouldn't rule that one out pretty big feel for that one though so there might be one or two hard luck stories on the turns then we'll be back across the other side of the world again to Australia for Melbourne Cup Day from Flemington uh, it's always an exciting day and we've got some pretty good looking races the first one of which is the Cantala Stakes which is a group one handicap something that a lot of us over here in Europe are not used to but they are a perfect addition for the starters order six leagues they give plenty of people a chance to get a shot at some of the bigger races and crowd delight like for Steve Ram will have to give weight away to Silver Chair and Tuk Tuk there's quite a few in there that look like they've got a bit of a chance but it's wide open especially with the weight situation and you could Run again, run that one three or four times and get different winners every time and you, you do well to pick the winner. The next race is the big one, of course, the Melbourne Cup. And, of course, that's a two-mile handicap. We've got a really small field this season. I'm not sure why this wasn't made a two-entry race. There's normally a good 20-odd horses in this. Uh, we've only got about 12 this time, I think. And wait your turn for Joshua Sutherland. Looks a pretty good top weight off 120, 150 for Steve Rand. Just a pound lower. Also looks pretty good. You'd think it would be between those two, but if you look down... The car there, you've got quite a few decent long distance handicappers who are getting some weight. Things like horses like Duck Swoop and Pace Ashton Lord, Drum Taps, Morgan Zeg Eye, they're all getting a little bit of weight from the top two or three. So it could be a really interesting race that one, but you'd still expect it to go to one of the top three, wouldn't you? Then we've got the Emirates Stakes, which is a one mile two furlong group one, just a standard group one this time. Wait for age, so the top rated sliced bread will be a warm order, I would think, for that one. Schwartz for Hans Jones knows off like a rocket normally. Twinted for Steve Rand is normally there or thereabouts. Teachers pets in there for Django as well. It's a big field. You could get one or two hard luck stories and Molly at Surfers Mighty Bing Tone could spring a little bit of a surprise in that one. The final race then on the penultimate day of the season is the VRC Sprint Classic. It's a six furlong group one. We've only got six horses in it, which is a real surprise again. Search and destroy the top rated one. Looks to have a great chance. Exocet Missile has been in and out all season. And Paul Rhodes will be hoping that that one will spring into action. Spooky Wood for John Morgan can't be ruled out. But I like the look of Lavadaz, even though it's rated £16 inferior to Search and Destroy. I think it probably could go close and give Darren Thompson a decent end to day two. So that's your day two then. I'm pretty sure we've got uh, Doug, Mike and Tim as well on the commentaries today. So without further ado, I'll hand you over to Doug at Moody Valley.